The Boston Celtics through two preseason games have looked really good, but there's a lot of guys that need to prove something. Some guys look really good. Some guys look really bad. In this video, we're going to break down the ins and outs of all of these guys who looked amazing and who's slowly starting to lose their role here for the Celtics. Yeah, and spoiler alert, one of them is Sammy Buckets. That games, Those games were horrible. All the starters were out, Ricky. Uh, no Porzingis, Jalen, Jason. All those guys were out. So this is a big game for the guys who want to be the seventh man, the eighth man, the ninth man. This is a big game. And some guys impressed. Some guys did not impress at all. And the first, game, first guy I want to talk about, Ricky, Sam Hauser. I mean, he was a guy I was so excited to see um, throughout the preseason. I was like, listen, he's going to have the biggest shot in the world to come up and make a role for himself. But it versus the Knicks, he did not at all. And quite frankly, versus the Sixers in that first game, he didn't hit a shot. He was 0 for 6 from 3, um, was a plus 7. But listen, you got to hit your shots. If you're going to come in here and be uh, you know, a shooter for us, someone who we can rely on to shoot the ball, you need to hit your shots. So I think he's, what, uh, 2 of 15 from 3 in two games? You, we can't have that. So with that being said, someone did step up. Svi Mikhailuk. Now, this is a guy we just signed a couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago, maybe. Uh, he was 3 of 7, 5 of 9 from the floor, 15 points, and he looks really good chewing the ball. He can fucking fly, man. Yeah. I didn't know he could fly like that. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. I see you. Yeah. I see he, you. He, uh, he impressed me. He can fly. Yeah. yeah. No, I, he, he was nice. I, I I don't have a lot of uh, – how do you pronounce his name? Uh, Svi Mikhailuk. Svi Mikhailuk. Okay. I don't have a lot of uh, Svi Mikhailuk. Uh, knowledge. I'll be honest yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, I'm not I'm ultimately. I don't ultimately familiar with his game. I, I I probably have watched a highlight here or there. Didn't think much of it. Um. You know, this is probably the first time I've actually seen him play. But I mean, he caught my attention immediately. I I kind of double took when, especially when he had that uh you know dunk on that uh on that highlight play that I know yeah. that they showed on their website stuff like that. I. I, yeah, I was impressed. I thought he was super impressive. Uh, I'm going to pump the brakes on him, though, just because it's preseason. It, it's kind of like there's not a lot of information on him. I don't even think they, you know, they. I don't even think they scout a guy like that, to be honest. Uh, you know, yeah. I think he was fun. I, I think he's uh, an interesting player. And heck, if, he's big. So if you can incorporate him somehow to be a, a post option or if you can incorporate him, uh, you know, to – to be a guy who can grab boards and, you know, be a guy who can do the little things, then I'm good with that. But, you know, I, I don't necessarily get super jazzed up about a guy like that just because, A, I don't have much information on him. And, B, yeah. you know, is this a flash in the pan instance where he just kind of like, you know, in the same way, you know, Banton, you know what I mean? Like, is this is this guy for real? Like, is he, is he like, yeah. as good as I'm looking at? Or is this, you know, just some preseason basketball? The guy catches fire. The team doesn't really make it a priority to, like, close him out of the game. And so, you know, he's he's balling out. And that's fine. I mean, I'm good with that. I'm sure that as the regular season goes and he, and he gets some minutes, I'm sure they're not uh, – then again, they're not hounding film on him to see, yeah. like, what his game is like. But I think at the same time, it's like, you know, how much is how many minutes is a guy like that really going to play? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't really know, you know, he didn't even start um, on a, on a B squad team. So I don't even know how he developed in camp and what, and what the team thinks of him and what coaches think of him as far as rotation pieces. But I mean, the, the kid balled out, there's no two ways about it. I mean, to watch the game. He's probably aside from Pritchard to me, he was the most fun player to watch on the court that night too. Yeah. I mean, and to go off what you're saying, he might not even make the team. I mean, we're sitting here praising him, saying he had a good game. Right. But that's one game. I mean, he's still there's right. three more three more preseason games left. But right now, I, I'm not gonna lie. I had Sam Hauser getting a ton of minutes for the Celtics team over the entirety of the regular season. But I don't know, man. It's Sam Hauser, it's only been two games. He's got to step it up. He's three more preseason games. I want to see him start to hit his shot and if he can do that i think he's going to be a huge asset for us going forward but a guy like Stephen kyle is making sure that it's not going to be an easy time for him to uh keep those minutes under his belt now another guy i want to talk about o'shea Brissett. it seems like we're filled with guys who can or six seven six eight are lengthy wing defenders but can also slash shoot the ball a little bit just some versatile wings i think o'shea Brissett 
came in, had a good night versus the Knicks. I think he was uh, three of seven from the floor, uh, the floor get, got to the free throw line five times at 10 points overall, five rebounds. I like his versatility. And if you remember that game versus the Sixers, he had a crazy putback dunk. You just saw, see his athleticism. Don't know if you saw that play, but they end up calling it back. I think O'Shea Brissett's a sleeper. And, um, you know, if Sam Hauser loses minutes, I wouldn't be surprised to see O'Shea Brissett actually steal those pretty easily because, like I said, lengthy defender can is a real good hustler. And, uh, you know, he's, he's fun to watch as well. So I feel like there's some guys, some young guys on this team that I was actually very impressed with. Like you said, Delano Banton. These guys need to show yeah. consistency, though. And before we get any further into this video, guys, do me a big favor. Hit that like button. Not only does it help out grow the channel so much, uh, but it also gets this video to so many more Celtics fans. We're trying to build an army here, a family aspect to this channel. So make sure you guys hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. We're going to be dropping a podcast every single weekend. So join the family. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. And Ricky, what should they do as well? I mean... Fill up the comment section, man. We want to hear your thoughts, your opinions. You know, even if we disagree with you, it's all good. That's all part of the culture here. We all want the same thing. And so make sure you're commenting as well. We want to know your thoughts. Yeah, so comment down below. Who do you think has been the best Celtic looking so far in the first couple of games of preseason? And with that being said, let's get right back into the video. Um, so that's the only thing I want to see tonight. Yeah. Tonight they play with O'Shea, again. With O'Shea, I, I, I noticed he... Didn't shoot the three particularly well. I mean, he kind of yeah. reminds me of a longer Grant Williams um, in a lot of respects. So I don't, I don't necessarily know how. Uh, to your point about Sam Hauser and and him getting some of his minutes because of that, I don't necessarily hate the idea. I think he's a better defender just from my glance. Mm -hmm. um, which, by the way, side note the the way this B team played defense against the Knicks starters. I was actually kind of impressed. Yeah, I um, was. Hopefully that's signs to come. Hopefully that's Joe Mazzulla's imprint. I, I was impressed because I was like, you know, they got Julius Randle out there. And I, and I know they're not trying 100%. But, I mean, you know, they really just have one good player, the Knicks. Everybody else yeah. is just so average. Yeah, Jalen Brunson's um, good. Brunson's a dog. I mean, yeah. I, that's another guy I really do like – uh, watching him play. I liked him in Dallas. I, I don't know why he didn't stay there, why they didn't try to keep him, I should say. I, that was and, weird. That was weird. And uh, and the Knicks got a steal there. That's definitely their best player, and he's a stud. Um, but he's far and away their best player, and everybody else just kind of – it's a it's a massive drop-off uh, in talent. So I don't, I don't fear the Knicks. Um, I hate the Knicks. I hate the Sixers. If you if yeah. you're fans of yeah. Philly or New York or LA, I mm -hmm. don't like you. No, I'm just kidding. I, I don't care if you, <laughs> if you don't if you root for those teams. I don't dislike you, but I don't like your teams at all. So uh, so you know it's it's always fun to watch us uh, play and beat those teams. And, and they and they played their B A guys and we played our B guys. And I don't really care about the outcome. It's just a preseason game. Uh, even though we lost, I I still liked a lot what I saw from the B teams, except from Sam Hauser. I thought he sucked. I think he sucks both games. And, um, and it's not, that's not good, dude. I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying I'm putting the kibosh on Sam Howes in a preseason game, but dude, if you can't play good in a preseason game, like when good, when can you play good? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? It, like where, where's the bar? Like you can't shoot over a guy who barely plays in the league and you have way more experience. And I mean, he's playing against guys that have no experience in the league and you can't yeah. make a basket. So it's, it's not good. I'm not saying he's, trash or we should cut them or any of that stuff but i no. mean shit man i mean the two, two outings very very it wasn't like he was okay he wasn't even okay in either game he was terrible in both games he was good on the glass and but that's about it he was getting some rebounds but i i, I agree he, he's got three games show what you got you got three more outings to uh yeah i mean eight, eight rebounds is, is is nothing uh to sneeze at it's it's decent he, at it least is. he did that well yeah, yeah. That, that's that's good eight rebounds yeah. i give him that other than that, Ricky, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little bit concerned with this backup rotation in terms of center, the center position specifically. I don't think Luke Cornett was anything great. I don't think Kata, I mean, he was okay at times. I think he fouled like five times this game. Uh, Wayne Gabriel wasn't anything either. I, I just don't know. Is Cornett truly our option right now? Like, is there anybody else out there that we can get? Um, and I know Joe Mazzula and Brad Stevens are actually pretty high on Luke Cornett. But as of right now, from what I've seen from him, I'm not too excited about that aspect of our team. But listen, I'm we got to take a I'm risk. not worried about it. I think I think if Brad needed to make a trade for a – I'm not saying a starter. 
You know, I'm not talking about no, no, like no. a <laughs> I'm not talking about go getting a guy like Steven Adams or something crazy like that. No. But I but I think I think that um that if need be, I think he would go get somebody of value like a like a Mo Bamba, not saying him yeah. specifically, but somebody of that game type that's like, hey, he can play defense, he can block shots, he can get yeah. on the boards. Somebody like that type of player that's just, you know, kind of, you know, just a, a journeyman type player that can go from team to team and just service for a little bit and then go to a different team. Yeah. Um, you know, we had, we have had those guys in the past and, you know, it does suck in postseason because they don't give us a lot of value in those games, but then, you know, you put them in the regular season and they flash and they have, you know, a couple of good games here and there. And I think, Really, what that what that piece is is a is a regular season piece. Uh, I do understand your concern, and I, and I'm sure that as we see games develop, we'll be able to analyze that. I mean, no team is perfect; they all have flaws somewhere. And if and if I would say that if our flaw was uh, post game slash interior presence. Uh, yeah. And then slash maybe like not on the best scale of rebounding. As long as it's not as bad as how rebounding was like three years ago. I remember it being like deplorable and us being like so garbage at trying to get rebounds. As yeah. long as it's not that bad, I can live with our uh, kryptonite being uh, some interior presence because I think that our uh, flip side of solving that problem, getting rid of Rob Williams, getting Drew in here, I think – way outweighs that whole issue. I think we can yeah. mask those things and make those things work in a different direction. No, yeah. I mean, completely understandable. In my terms, I just feel like it could get bad. Porzingis, you know, knock on wood, he does have injury history. Al Horford's getting up there in age. He's not going to play second uh, second days of back-to-back. So the center position is important for us. The backup center position is important. They're going to get minutes. They're going to play probably – even even start some games, I wouldn't even doubt if Porzingis is out and Horford has a day off. Listen, I think Cornette's going to get a lot of playing time. I just want to see him play a little bit better. Um, I don't I don't mind him. I just wish we had at least another option that I liked. Um, but there's Dwight Howard out there. I don't know if we'd want Dwight Howard just to throw in there for two minutes. But I don't want I don't want Dwight Howard. 